Hello, hello everyone! Welcome to this match between Potassium F and Pocket One. I'm Silva Skaels and joining me in the stream for the Osumania Apprentice Level 7K Tournament is going to be Sparky. Hello there, how are you doing today? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Excited to get this round of 16 weekend fully underway. Uh, we're continuing on uh, with the block of matches that's starting off. Uh, we had the 
earlier hour, Lawler 361 and Nana Sakura going at it. We're now continuing on. Uh, as you mentioned, Potassium F and Poketuan up on screen here fighting for their tournament lives down in that loser's bracket. It'll be interesting to see who comes out on top here to keep their tournament run alive. You know, I was going to say that the long text at the start remind me of a certain 4K chart. I think some of you may be familiar with it, or at least some of the older people. It, it reminds me of this chart named Moscow. I think it was very Theo style, or whoever that was. But yeah, that was certainly what the long jacks looked like, and definitely patterns you'd see more on 4K than in 7K. Yeah, for sure. And it's always interesting seeing the warm ups from players, uh, especially in situations like this, because there's different avenues of approach you can take to them. You can either throw out something. Uh, outrageously silly or you can do something that's like actually somewhat serious and like actually meant to get your hands warm going into this match and just given the way uh, these anchors kind of fly across the different columns it's a pretty decent way to make sure all your fingers are actually like working before you get into the actual match oh no we're back to the long just I mean these can certainly help you warm up a lot just I mean, what? it's something. <laughs> and it is worth right. noting that uh, this warm-up is actually longer than a lot of the maps we have in the pool. Could potentially be stamina draining uh, to start things off. Maybe a little bit of gamesmanship going on there to... Uh, get your opponent a little bit more tired before they get into the match, but ultimately it's probably just somebody rocking out to a song that they like at the end of the day. And here we go. Well, I think judging by the map alone, I think it's to see that the Ashton may have the better discount over all the public ones. Yeah, I think mean, the good thing is that it is a warm up. You don't really. Uh, I always like to say you, you you can you don't win in the warm ups, but you can definitely lose in the warm ups if you find yourself overexerting yourself. And this might just be a, a way of uh, getting yourself into a groove without really uh, throwing away all your all your energy, given the performances we are seeing. I mean, it is a hard chart, especially for. Uh, the level of the map pool they're going to be going into, so I mean, it might work out in their favor at the end of the day. And right now, I mean, there's only a 1% difference, but considering the length of this map, I can see, I can tell it really just quickly. Yeah, for sure. For it, it, it's interesting because at least one of these two is sight reading this and the fact that it is as close as it is is maybe a sign of things to come between these two players sure the accuracies are really close but that score difference might it might come down to who can hold on to combo for that little bit longer in some of these charts and sure enough that'll do it for the warm up here Wonder if Potassium has anything in store for us. Look, I'm kind of... Oh, wait. Oh, this... Is my... If I'm not mistaken, this was in the main World Cup... Uh... 2020... I forgot. Was it this year? I think this was in the main World Cup. Like, I'm very stupid. It'd be interesting to find out. And if this is... Uh, Potassium's warm-up, then... It's going to be very interesting to see how they perform on this. Well, we'll just have to see how this plays, because I think this definitely fits onto the round of system mode, but I honestly think this is a little bit too hard even for the stage even. And we're seeing some intimidation tactics coming out from Potassium, a long-time Mania World Cup commentator. Uh, maybe just wanting to show off uh, some of their map pool knowledge. 
It's all the ones that they might have practiced. I mean, speaking of practice, looks like Pokemon uh, as they say that, never mind. Because, like, I don't know about you, but Pokemon well, Pokemon Twine is going to be more consistent on the cards at least at least based on something like this. Unless a major drop happens by the end of this card, really, which can happen because of fatigue and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, a good thing is that it is half the length of the other warm up, but I mean, honestly, the fact that they're both holding on to relatively high 98s on a chart that probably wouldn't show up until later stages of this tournament, if at all, uh, given the density of some of these chords is honestly astonishing as it gets a little bit more dense to read through sure the missile starts to come out a little bit more but that's to be expected because I mean, ultimately there is a limit to the level of reading of some of these players and it's a credit to both of them the fact that they're going to pretty much stay even with each other and going into the match i mean this could be a potential tiebreaker on the horizon if they're pretty much inseparable. And man, the actors leads the Pokemon Twan right now, but like, it's actually really close. I do think, I do think Cords are a very uh, interesting skill set, because like this is the kind of this is the kind of maps where you expect people to have their best accuracies, but you see a lot of 50s and misses instead of 200s overall. And right there, I think it's a big misread from Katasha Math. Yeah, just keeping track of where these chords are lining up gets a little hard to read through. And Pokemon's been able to make it through relatively unscathed. Like you were saying, this is a pretty black and white skill set. And they're going to trade on their warm-ups one-to-one uh, -one before we get into uh, the roles and the bands and protects here. So a lot to look forward to just based on these warm-ups alone. Setting the expectations very early on. Yeah, I mean, we we literally saw the two hundreds and the misses swap from each other, and it's evident that Pocket One had the more consistent run in the kind of map. Though I feel like core jack maps are like hit or miss, especially because you might be more consistent on some days and less consistent on some days. The only difference is that when we say more consistent, it could be like a much higher score than yeah. a you know, expected. And there we go with the rolls. Looks like the Tasha and Elvis could be opening up with the first pick, but we have to see Pokemon's ban first. Hybrid 2 is gonna be the ban. Not sure, actually. I mean, we could double check the statistics, though. So, uh, you know, maybe we can double check and see why that's the third banning. Though, Potash and Banning Rise, I think that also made sense because like, we did see. That in a map like uh, that map is playing right now, you wouldn't want to miss a lot in the chords and whatever. Yeah, for sure. Just maybe paying a little bit of respect to Pokemon's rice accuracy. I think Potassium F is going to want to opt to stay in this lower half of the map pool, maybe exhaust the LNs first. And sure enough, going to go into LN1 here. Let's say decent, it doesn't decently to open up. So I can see I, I'm looking at hybrids right now. It it looks like it looks like Potassium F is performing decent actually. Pocket Twine has one of the lower scores in Coma and so that's not entirely sure why Potassium would ban why uh, no sorry, rather I think it was Pocket Twine who banned the hybrids actually. Yes. So I think Pocket Twine banning hybrid makes a lot of sense now, at least looking at their qualifier. Like the qualifiers was also I think Hybrid was also one of the weakest, or at least one of the weakest, yeah, but ranked 44 overall. Alrighty, and we get the first map of this best of nine underway. It is going to be Potassium S first pick on LN1 here. This coordination pick and Poketon already finding a couple of slider breaks in this introduction gonna drop down a couple of percent here and give potassium f a pretty substantial lead to start this map off with yeah i mean think of it this way potassium f is very consistent when it comes to slow long notes so i'm not surprised that they are destroying this pick though Poket twine has been dropping some 50s here and there which is very bad for a map like this. 
Because look at the star rating, 2.59 star. Usually that means the object count on this map is going to be very low. So that means that mistakes, or at least margin of error for mistakes is going to be very low. So essentially you have to play flawlessly, and that's what the National Map is doing right now. Yeah, still holding on to their FC here, going into the back half of the chart, able to navigate the lengths of these shorter LNs as Pokemon finds another drop here. Really not able to establish any semblance of combo, and Potassium F is really starting to pull away here, uh, thanks to that already growing their lead to about 60,000 points with a third of the chart left to go. There's really not a lot Pokemon can do in this back half of the chart to try and make a dent in this lead. It's really going to come down to whether or not Potassium F uh, has a bit of a collapse here, but honestly, they have quite a couple of misses saved in the bank that it would take a basically complete meltdown on their end to hand any semblance of a shot back to Pokemon as they find another couple of drops going to the last eighth of the chart now. Yeah, I mean, right now, the lead that Potassium F has right now is a little bit insurmountable, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Like, there's only barely any time left, and considering the margin here, it's a little bit too much. So Pokemon perform pretty well, especially with the 97 on a map like this. This is just really what Potassium F should look good at. So a very good play from both players. Just what an amazing run for Potassium F. 5 to 100, and also almost 1 is to 10 ratio and something like that. Very impressive work. And but Pocket Twine also put in very good effort as well. Yeah, the good thing for Pokemon is the fact that I don't think they're going to willingly go into the LN hybrids and there's still enough rice picks for them to basically answer back on and it looks like rice three is gonna be their first shot at basically maintaining parity here. Something tells me this is not a good pick. It's like you're trying to open up with something that I think Pokemon potentially could win on. But again, there are so many other rice picks that could be worked on here. And you're going with Potentially the one that I think of National F has a good chance of winning. So then again, if you start from the one of number two, National F did lose on that one. So I guess it's a couple points where it's hard. However, I think it would be nice to save the safer, the quote unquote safer picks later on rather than, you know, trying to go for that right now. Yeah, it's better to get these risky picks out of the way early sometimes just to make sure they can't be used against you in certain situations. But. We'll be getting into the second map of this best of nine. Pokemon's first pick, it is going to be Rice 3 coming out here. And strong starts from both players. It'll be interesting to see what happens as we get further along. As Pokemon actually finds the first break here, thankfully very early on. So not going to do too much damage, but can't afford to find any more drops as we go deeper into this chart now. Yeah, okay, here's going to be, here's going to be the concern for me, all right. Um, this lead that you see from the right now is not a big lead by any means. Um, Core Jacks, especially in 7k, really forced you to be able to read um, the multiple notes at the same time on command. And right now, Potassium is dropping that accuracy, but that one miss really affected the transport. Yeah, sometimes, oh, I was about to say, sometimes just a tiny little mistake can start to add up, and that second one is actually going to start to do a significant amount of damage as we make our way into the back half of the chart now. Pokemon is able to recover some of their accuracy, starting to rival up against Potassium F in that 99.7 mark, but that second drop is going to give them less room to work with now as the lead now grows to about 13,000 points in favor of Potassium F, who is still holding on to their FC as we transition to the last third of the chart now. Yeah, there is one third left. Potassium's lead, certainly a solid one, but this could go back to Poké Twine if Potassium ends up missing or any corner drops, really. Because, like, this is a very... Even if they said it was solid, this could still go either way, because look at Pokémon's act as they say that. Never mind! Yeah, I mean, you were highlighting it as we as a pick came through that this is a very risky pick because of the fact that uh, with these core jack picks it's very easy to very easy to find a couple of drops here, here and there and if your opponent has a clean enough run like potassium f is having right now and that last drop is going to potentially be the nail in the coffin here for pokemon's attempts to get back into this 
And Potassium F going to take the break point here to start this match off as well to make it 2 to 0 and a almost V1 double S, the singular 100. Mari A. I didn't even see that one pop through. C27, C I think, by the way. C Wait, C27? C27, right? Uh, Sorry, C20 C29, by the way. C29, by the way. If that's what a C29 can do, I am terrified to think of what the top seeds can do on that chart. <laughs> I mean, we always but... make the joke in 4Key that core jacks are always basically just a sharpshooting battle. The fact that at these lower levels of 7Key, we're also seeing that start to develop here amongst the lower seeded players. Uh, is going to be very interesting to track throughout the rest of this tournament now that we have it in the pools. I agree, and like, man, and like, wow, Potassium F is really popping off right now. I think it's 2 to 0, right? Yes, 2 to, two zero, to 0. Right? In favor of Potassium F winning their first map on LN1 and then taking that breakpoint on Rice 3. And just to keep you guys updated, uh, it looks like Potassium F's next pick is going to be LN2. So working their way through these LN charts, unsurprising. Uh, they do have the full complement available to them. And just sticking with that same strategy, I think there's a lot of players in this tournament that want to stray away from the LNs. That if you do feel confident enough in your LN ability, you can definitely uh, work that to your advantage against certain players. Mm -hmm. Advantage certainly is important here, knowing what your opponent is good at and bad at, and also same for yours, like being self-aware and also being aware of others. And right now, I think Potashimov is showing a good display of uh, awareness in general, knowing how to strategize and all with whatever opponents they have. Yeah, for sure. And that's not to say Pogotuan isn't out of this just yet. Uh, sure, maybe found a little bit of a hiccup on Rice 3, but they were going to have to go into a pick like that eventually if they wanted to uh, make any sort of headway in this match. So better to get it out of the way early and maybe use that as a wake-up call to really hunker down in terms of overall rice accuracy, especially if they're going to opt to stick with that strategy going further into this match. And now as we get into this third map, it's going to be interesting to see if Poketuan can answer back against Potassium's very strong LN accuracy that they've been showing so far. It is indeed very strong. Although right now, I think that was actually a 100 or a 50. Whoa, what? What just happened? This is... A little bit interesting though, Poketuan trades two back. When I say two, it wasn't just a miss, but the accuracy drop as well. So, really, two birds in one stone, really, for Poketuan. So, that is just cash for more advantage now. Yeah, it just looks like a couple of misreads as we get further along these chords a little bit. Start to build up into a very dense uh, mess overall, and. It just looks like keeping the fingers held down as you try to navigate the other columns are a little bit too much to ask for, especially for Pokemon at the moment. As they drop down into that 95% range, I wonder if that's maybe just a, a little bit of reading fatigue as these columns start to get a little bit inundated as we get further along. Potassium F doing a really good job of recovering, getting back up with that 400 combo cap and really starting to pull away here now. 90,000 points to margin between the two players as we make our way into the last third of the chart now. Yeah, I mean, time is really running out for Poketoin right now. Um, Potassium F did a really good job indeed, as you've said. Like, these slow LNs give you very little like, it's kind of ironic, I say, that this is just quote-unquote slow elements, and yet there's so little opportunity or so little time for you to claw back leads if you're not careful. Yeah, and I think this is basically the epitome of why a lot of players, especially in this tournament, opt to stray away from these elements, because it's just so easy uh, to find yourself having these little hiccups here and there on some of these dare I say less complicated uh, patterns it's just it's very easy to 
find yourself slipping off your keyboard and just find yourself losing a lot of accuracy and despite a couple of hiccups from both players potassium comes out on top in the trades overall and picks up their third point here to make it three to zero now yeah those those 50s and misses probably could make uh someone think uh, maybe this could have been uh, much better compared to my practice scores although then again if you're in a match situation you don't have time to think of that and just you know accept the fact that okay we won the point we move we continue and i think that's what Tashimev's mindset right now should be Definitely yeah. has the focus on winning this point. Absolutely. And looks like Pokotuan going to stick with their strategy here, going to stick with the rice charts, and going to go into rice four here. Rice four is an interesting map. Um, I think the biggest, my biggest concern would be consistency in here. Especially, um, Pokotuan has been missing a few times here and there. But Ashram has been mega consistent for the most part. So I do hope that whatever Poketon is going for, it could be something that Kopashim is a little bit uh, in a disadvantage. But right now, I don't think that's the case. Yeah, for sure. The onus is definitely on Poketon right now to pull out some performances here on these rice charts because before too long, they might find themselves pinched into a corner where they have no good picks left to go through and then having to fight through some of Potassium F's strength in that lower half of the map pool is a bit of a daunting task, but one that they might have to undertake, but doing a really good job now through this introduction. 99.4% their accuracy as Potassium taking a little bit of damage here down into the low or high 98%, about to climb back up into the 99% range, but it does give Pokemon a tiny bit of a cushion to work with as they find the first couple of drops here. Yeah, I like how you the moments of cushion. There was a, there was a drop on Pokemon's head because it seems like Potassium F is able to take advantage of that. And right now, this is the part where I'm really nervous about. And as you stated, Pocket One drops as well. Like, this part requires to be mega focused. Uh, it also requires your wrist to be very stable. And currently, I can tell both of them are, in a way, unstable with their wrist. It's more of a who's more consistent here. Yeah, for sure. These X patterns swinging back and forth kind of catching both of them out as they progress through it. I think they kind of settled in, but like you were saying, the amount of focus needed to make it through those transitions unscathed, maybe proving a little bit too much for both of them, but Potassium F comes out on top in those trades at the end of the day. Still a quarter of the map left to go, but it's going to take another couple of drops to uh, really swing this lead back into a contentious state as they're riding about 45,000 points in their favor. Yeah, I mean, time is running out, and the paper has really went to the cash to at this rate. Pokemon finding drops is definitely not helping. Not to mention the cash to just hitting these parts consistently. Never mind, but it's a little bit too late. Those patterns clearly did not affect the cash to at all, and that's why they're taking this next pick. Yeah, those ending bursts are... Very interesting to read through, both of them making it through unscathed, but Potassium F will pick up their fourth point and make it a match point situation on top of that. With one LN pick remaining, they do have the remaining hybrids as well, if they wanted to throw a little bit of spice into the equation, but I imagine LN3 is on the cards to try and put a nice little bow on the proceedings here. That's true. I would, I would say Potassium may want to go for Super Fantasy at this point. Yeah, I think that's the map of least resistance for Potassium. They have had an edge on these LN picks. Why take a chance and overcomplicate things? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's I think it's just the most straightforward way at this rate. Uh, after all of the potential picks and whatnot, I think <laughs> LN three is the way to go. A hybrid three could also work because you think of it this way. A uh, Pokemon did ban a hybrid. I mean, I guess just pick any hybrid really, so there we go. Yeah, hybrid one. Maybe Why a little bit of a change of pace. It is uh, another relatively short map, clocking in at just over two minutes. Maybe throw some variety in there as well, maybe 
throw off the sense of potential onlookers as to how the performances are on the entirety of the LM pool. Yeah, that's fair. Here we go. So let's see. Let's see how both players are gonna perform. I mean, realistically speaking, I think with the motivation and the skill sets that we've seen so far, it may seem the potential has the advantage, but anything can happen, really, and I think there's still a chance. Yeah, for sure. It's not over until the final point has been won, and in certain situations, sometimes getting that last point can prove to be uh, the hardest task in match situations, but I mean, Potassium F is no stranger to these types of situations. Definitely very versed in tournament play. Poketuan as well has started making their appearance in a number of tournaments recently, but finding that first drop here in this introduction right before that 400 combo cap as well is going to give Potassium F a very healthy cushion to work with right out of the gate here. Yeah, it's certainly going to be a good uh, good way for Potassium to hold even if they make any mistake. But the problem is, Pocket Twine has most made mistakes of their own right now. And this is going to be key because the patterns here are going to be very uncomfortable. Especially the transitions between your fingers, between your hands, the transition between different hands and whatnot. It's just going to be really difficult to be consistent in here. The, the yeah, for sure. And the patterns I'm really looking at are uh, those. LN bursts on the space bar, on the long space bar LN. Both players actually navigating both of those sections very nicely as we make our way further and further, but unable to maintain the momentum for both of them as they trade misses here going into the last third of the chart. These trades in this situation only help Potassium F, who has built up a massive 37,000 point cushion and right now is on the cusp of punching their ticket into the quarterfinals. And our drop here gonna damage the score just a little bit here. Can't really afford to give up too many more going into this last quarter, there's still a chance for Pokemon to pull this one back. Yeah, I mean, it's very unfortunate because right now the lead is still shaking a little bit, but it's a little too late in my opinion, as again, there's not that many parts in this map that could make you mess up, but once again, you can still hope, and I think both players did relatively well on this match, regardless of the result here. And that's about it, I think. I think that Mr. Pocket Wine is the nail in the coffin. Congratulations to Potassium F for advancing to the next round. And Pocket Wine performed really well, had a good fight. And I think it's it's safe to say that both players just... I just hope they both had fun in this match, really. Yeah, for sure. These are some pretty incredible scores from both of them on potentially another day. Pokemon might have had a couple points to their names. The ratios between the two of them pretty even on some of these charts. It really just came down to who was able to keep it clean for that little bit longer. And that's really what counts as Potassium F, like you said, punches her ticket into the next round, knocking out Poketuan from uh, Malt here. And that will do it for this match, but not for this block overall. We do have another match coming up at the top of the hour at 15 UTC. It is going to be Charles Mad Cut going up against Unitori uh, before we take a little bit of a break and come back at 17 UTC for a match between Exile Faker and uh, you. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I am nervous. I am nervous, but alright. Anyways, good luck to these players. I do hope to see some insane matches. Thank you so much for stopping by. Do you have any final word for me for the end? Nope, I think that's all that needs to be said, and until then, we'll catch you guys later.